Are you looking to level up your painting game instantly? As a semi-beginner myself, I'll show you how I went from a basic paint job like this to something a lot more interesting like this with virtually no practice in between. I have just applied a few simple concepts that have given pretty amazing results. I'm not saying it is a work of art, but it's a huge improvement from what I used to be able to paint. I'm painting this joyful band as part of my Necromunda diorama that promises to be nothing short of epic. I'll be painting the sniper first and then the stalker with the binoculars. I started to apply a dry brush over a zenithal highlight in blue to bring that nighttime vibe. And right away, I reinforced the highlights on the stalker. This is my first takeout from painting the sniper earlier. Increase the light by increasing contrast. You have to really push it and it's good to do it in the form of a grisaille in black and white so you can focus on contrast and you don't waste time adjusting to get the right color. If your light placement goes wrong, start over again. Cover it with grey or black and place your new light with a light grey or white. Pay attention to your paint dilution, keep it thin enough so that the paint has some transparency. On the sniper, which I painted first, I applied a glaze of standard paint. I didn't have the contrast-like paints already, because the last time I painted with intention, contrast paints did not exist yet. As you can see on the right, it's so much more vibrant and transparent. I guess most of you already have this new type of paints, but if you don't, it will change your painting game. I don't use it as one coat magic, but as a heavy glaze. Now, if you find this video helpful, please do me a favor by liking the video and by subscribing. I take it as a I want to see more and it's heartwarming to know that there are people who really enjoy the content I produce. Even with some underpainting, the result is monochrome and it needs to be enriched. The highlights I added not only reinforced contrast but also brought color variation to get rid of that one coat contrast effect which is very obvious to the eye and diminishes the interest. I also enrich the shadows with a magenta glaze. That's how I started on the sniper, enriching the green of the cloak. I had to come back with a green dry brush, as I lost my main color between the brown shadow and blue highlights.
it took me to glaze over and over again to be happy with the cloak. But I'm satisfied with the richness of the color. I then added what was supposed to be the reflection of a ray of moonlight. And although it turned out to look like an active camouflage cloak, it adds a great deal of interest on this somewhat flat part of the model and it creates a line that drives the eye towards the tip of the rifle. Comparing the first and second paint job, I learned two things. The first one is to push the contrast further. And the second one may be the most important of the whole video. On the stalker on the right, look at the vertical line of light from the hood to the right of the shoulder to the wrap on the forearm and the back of the leg. I've been wondering how to place highlights correctly so that it's consistent and sells. I'd heard that the top part of the miniature should be brighter than the bottom part, but never that considering a vertical line is really effective for a consistent highlight placement. I think it got me closer to where I want to go. Not only does it bring contrast from left to right, but it guides the eyes on the model from top to bottom. How well do you think it works? That really is the main takeout from painting these two models. But there's still one thing that I want to share with you. I now have the details to finish but also the metallic parts. That's it, I'm about to paint my very first NMM non-metallic metal. On the first model on the left, I'm not sure it went well. I used too much blue to my taste, but I still take it as a success, as my objective was to draw maximum attention to the rifle, and that nice contrast works for that. For the second model on the right, I used more grey, and I've been more careful to paint thinner and cleaner lines for the reflections with more contrast.
I had a real blast painting these two NMM and whether or not it sells as metal, I found it's a game changer on how you consider contrast. If you can do it with black and white, you can do it with any colors. So I'd advise anyone who hasn't yet to start painting NMM. It's not as hard as it looks and the benefits go beyond expectations. Overall, the smaller and the more detailed the part, the more I use something like stippling instead of brush strokes. A control stippling, just a few dots, will place the paint exactly where you need it. The last challenge on the model was the binoculars, where I also tried NMM. Though I feel I went too far, and it sold more as being metallic in the early stages, with a simple, single reflection. What do you think? Before the very end of the painting is where I noticed the grim reality of this miniature. The necklace, that I thought to be vials of some sorts of fluids, is in fact made of three fingers. Whose fingers already? I started with a rotten green flesh tone, but I thought of the context and saw an amazing opportunity. These models will be part of my Necromunda diorama. I can promise you, it will be one of a kind, truly epic diorama. I've never seen one like I'm about to show you. So in my previous video, you've seen the setting. It's a part of the city that was pretty well maintained until now. Why? Because of these guys. They are the baddies and they're here for troubles. Tags on the walls, blood, the exactions are still fresh. What does it have to do? with our guy's necklace. Rotten flesh means he's had the same finger necklace for a long time. No, I want a stalker. I want a hunter. Fresh bloody fingers. That puts him in the very live action of the coming Necromunda diorama. Thank you very much for watching. It was a real pleasure to welcome you into my universe. Subscribe and stay tuned.